right, hi everybody. Here we are again, backyard business. Uh, that's Ellie's idea. That's what we're calling this, and it's kind of a cool name. And we're in my backyard, and Anne Marie Saprinsky. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. I did, did say it right. Okay. It's great to have you. First Thank of all, you. I want to tell you. I mean, as usual, you're in the clothing business, but you always dress beautifully. And uh, is that something like that was always your thing? Funny story. Um, when it really became my thing was my first job was at Dairy Queen. Oh, okay. So I was in a uniform, um, a not so attractive uniform, yeah, yeah. and you can't possibly work at an ice cream place and not go home and sticky and dirty. And so I remember my first job after that was part-time in retail, and I was so excited that I got to put regular clothing on and look good. And so I just, I think more than ever became um, a fashion, passionate woman. Could you hook me up with a blizzard? I mean, do you have connections? Yeah, to get me a not any, well, you know yeah. what? My elementary school principal owned the Dairy Queen, uh, which is how I got the job. You know, that was big then. That was like a Very big, big side gig for people, you know, to own those ice mm -hmm. cream or hot dog. I had a couple of people that I knew that did the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. You make me think my first job was at Mack Truck on the assembly line. So, you know, it was uh, khakis, uh, exactly. work pants and boots, you know, and then, then I went into real estate and I was able to to dress, you know, so, and it's something I've always enjoyed. But first of all, I, I want to thank you for all you do for the community. I mean, you're really involved. You love Bethlehem. You have a passion for Bethlehem. You have an amazing store, and, and I mean a big time store, a lot of square footage, and, and uh, is it, is, wh how's, how you doing first and foremost? Um, you know, it's a crazy time in, um, in the world right now. So um, every day is an adventure. Every day is uh, full of possibilities. And what's awesome with my business, which is doing well, is that I'm about a relationship. So I just need one or two clients to come in um, and I can take care of them and business is good. So yeah. it's, my business is not traffic driven, it's relationship driven. You know, it's funny you would say it. So I have ADHD, so I, I, need, I need to be busy at all. So I'd be a volume person. I remember at one point I opened a delicatessen and I would stand outside, it was in downtown Allentown at the time, and like pray that someone would come downstairs to, to my deli. And fortunately, I sold it. But it was a good learning experience. But I think as a business person, people don't realize, uh, again, you're re you spent a lot of time in retail. So by the time you got into business, you were, this wasn't, you know, you opened a magazine one day and said, hey, I want to give that a shot. Exactly. I spent 38 years running um, stores across the United States and very diverse from big box um, the brand was called Annie Says, so they were off price, similar to a TJ Maxx maybe, out of North Jersey. I was at the Limited, I was at Gap, um, I was at Liz Claiborne where I worked with specialty designers like Dana Buckman and, and um, Sigrid Olson. So those were small, more intimate situations. And I spent five years at Walmart as a market manager. Oh, did you? Oh, wow. Which everyone goes, whoa, you at Walmart. Um, one of the best learning situations I, was say, I ever had. I was going to say, what an education. And when you say that, just so people understand, what it was that education? Just how to find product, the niche? I mean, what, 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 that's a fast market. It is. It is. It was very large volume. Um, and what? In tight margin? Incredibly tight. So I learned how to manage a P&L there better than any of the other businesses. And I had always been strong with managing I was a director of store operations for Annie Says and Mandy stores at some point. So it was about, I was always good at operations. Um, my passion was about what clothing looked like and my ability to engage with the associates and peers is what I believe made me successful. But at Walmart, you learn how to manage a PL like no other organization. Yeah, I, again, that's back to volume. So, uh, mm -hmm. so is it, I guess. I guess I'd real quick on that subject, I would assume that large they can buy cheaply and get it out the door for, for price. Do they ever want to stretch that margin or is that that's their niche? Uh, um, it is. They're always looking for, um, they're looking to grow the business. So you always have to be working with new brands um, to, it's amazing when you go to their corporate office to watch how many designers try to get in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, there's a wait list of people trying to get there because of the volume yeah. and the traffic that comes through. You would think high end might not be interested, but in Correct. fact, the access to volume is there. That's exactly right. So they definitely are about margin, but one of the things that they continue to do is give back and find ways to support their teams. 
So whether it's through, you know, college opportunities, further education. So they do, margins are always going to be the number one driver, but where they're able to make more profit, a lot of it does go back into their, their teams. So tell me about your business. What your, your, obviously your goal is to be profitable, but what you feel your niche is and, you know, how you got in and why. Our niche. Are you supposed to say niche or niche? Anyway, I'm with niche. <laughs> I'm a niche person. <laughs> um, I, after doing what I said for 38 years, friends, family kept saying, okay, what are you doing? What's next? And I never thought about owning my own business. In all honesty, it terrified me because of the financial implications of the, yeah. um, you cannot be for faint of heart to open your own business. You know, that's, I'm sorry, I have to interject. That's what I love about small business people and business people in general. When you sign that lease, that's a big commitment. Mm -hmm. Now you got to get bring in inventory. That's a huge commitment. So did you do it on your own or did you have investors or? I did it on my own, oh, wow. which is even wow. more scary because yeah. I went from at that point a very successful, I always say to my clients, corporate career where yeah. every two weeks there was a really nice paycheck. Yeah. I knew how to inspire, motivate, train, and develop teams. So there were really nice bonuses at the end of the year, and I was confident I could make that happen, regardless of the challenges of business. Um, and then one day I walked away from all that. And within three weeks of signing the lease, well, three months of, for months I looked at the location I'm at. Um, I did a lot of homework with the owner um, because I thought about purchasing that company. Um, and what had happened in my career, I was often within the or organizations and new organizations recruited me to come in and fix things. Gotcha. So my ability to go in, create a business plan and say, okay, here's what's great, here's what's not, let's take all of this and create a plan to be successful. Mm -hmm. And what not everyone knows is I have a T elementary education and psychology <laughs> degree. Seems like everybody in the world started as a teacher. That and, I talked to. and when I did, it was really difficult getting, you know, early 80s. It was hard finding teaching jobs mm -hmm. where I was. And so I put that to use. And I, then I was working through college. I had to work through college part time in retail. And I was just, I loved it. Mm -hmm. So I was an assistant manager full time and student teaching full time my senior year of college and just started doing that. And and loved it so when I decided I kept everyone kept saying what are you gonna do why are you not opening your own business I was like I don't I don't know if I I don't have millions of dollars to to do this but I had a great advisor that I continue to work with um, I've had an executive advisor for over 20 years wow. and um, just the person that's invested in you it's exactly right, right. not Someone financially who, no uh, nope, okay no financial um, investments and decided to take over the location. I signed the location December 1 and I opened December 13th. Mm. But what I did was I was buying small inventory. It was going to my garage. I was buying hangers. I was doing mm. that and I opened the location. It's interesting to go back because in December it'll be nine years I'm open. Yeah. If you looked at what that shop looked like the day I opened, mm -hmm. there was pink carpeting. There was there were no fitting rooms because I didn't realize the person that was there when they left took the fitting rooms with them. Oh gosh! Okay. So um, opened, you know, yeah. very quickly yeah. with a small budget, yeah. um, and then killed it for two weeks at Christmas, and then just held I your felt breath. was awareness. <laughs> I needed awareness okay. about who I was and what I was going to be, and then yeah. we were modeled. We were modeled as I was still open. I. Again, because of relationships, I had people who would come in and yeah. put the floor in on a Sunday, Monday there when I was go. closed. And so that's how we we set it up to, to get where we were. I always say the Lehigh Valley is so much about relationships. You know, it, it just really is, you know, people who know people and usually good people that take good care of you. Uh, you know, it's always, that's not a bad thing. I want to ask you though, so people again that understand, you had to wake up at nights thinking, oh my gosh, what, what am I, why, what am I, I do? why am I doing this? <laughs> what am I doing? Yes, yeah, very scary. But what I think hel has helped me and continues to help me be successful is, you know, often, and, and because of where your office is, all everyone knows is, you see me alone in the store almost all the time. Mm -hmm. I have an amazing associate I found who's a retired school teacher. So when I'm not available or when we do special events and our, our shop of purpose events, I have someone there. Gotcha. But some of the things you know is, the reason small businesses go out most often is because they invest in all the this payroll. Yeah. I don't do that. Yes. I'm the and 
in a really great way, I've become the face of the brand. I wish I could say that was my strategy. It just happened where people said, I can't wear that clothing. And then if I go on social media as a more sophisticated older woman putting something on, they're like, wait, if you can do it, then maybe I can do it. So, so. they're not as not that, you know, people are always price confident. You're, you're not about your price point isn't your isn't your niche. It's just good not quality because I see your inventory and it's, you know, having daughters, it's it's amazingly beautiful. Thank you. You're well, a good it, buyer. Well, and I never, never was a buyer in my career. Oh, that's fine. Never. Thought, and it is funny. I, thought, I, I teed that up because I thought yeah. you were going to say, oh, I was a buyer for three years for no, whatever. No, I never. It just wasn't the path because I was in retail stores. Mm -hmm. I was never in a department store. Gotcha. So in department stores, there was a buying strategy mm -hmm. that you'd all become a buyer also. It sure. just didn't happen for me. What was really rewarding is the first probably two years in, everyone said, oh my God, this is the best collection. And I was terrified because I was never a buyer. I loved fashion, but because I loved it, that didn't mean everyone was going to love it. Where'd you come up with the name, by the way? <laughs> so everyone knows, AM Lux. It came a little bit by accident. I, When I first started the company, I created a holding company so that if and when I want to expand, I could do that. So that was called AM Lux Holdings. And I kept trying to find, what, what do I do? What do I call it? And one day I was like, no one ever remembers Amory. It's an older name. It's Marianne, Annie. I got called all kind of things throughout my career. Mm -hmm. So AM is after the owner, Amory. And mm -hmm. Lux was the experience I wanted the people to have when they came into my shop. Not price, experience. Lux. Oh, okay. Love it. Love it. I wanted to ask you because you're, you're so involved or you're involved in the community and running a business, you don't need, to, at other times you say, why do I do that? Because you really, it's it, being involved in, in what the things that you do in the city of Bethlehem and how involved you are. Are there times where you think, well, I know you love your city, but why am I doing this? This is energy. I love giving back. And what has been the most special part of my career in the last you know, eight years being open is, when I was across the United States traveling, those relationships and how I gave back were through the people in all the stores that I was in. But I never really got to be involved in a community ah. because I was on a plane three days a week. I was across the United States. At one point I had 250 stores. So I really wasn't at home very often to be in a community. So that's been very rewarding. It also um, inspires me to find ways to do it because I am a small business. I can't give hundreds of thousands of dollars to the community. So what can I do at a, on a very small scale that makes a difference? It's time, yeah, yeah. Well, you're an incredible woman, an incredible entrepreneur, an incredible business leader, and uh, I think you're amazing. So uh, oh, I love your new haircut, by the way. Thank you. I think you. it's terrific. And Thank as you. I said, you always dress wonderfully, and it's because, of course, that's what you do. Yeah. Do you have a parting thought? Maybe I don't. I usually don't say this, but I don't know. You, you're a very really smart woman. I think a lot of people look up to you, young potential leaders and business leaders. Well, thank you for that. Because one of the things I also love about being in this community is there are a lot of young women, um, particularly that I've been able to get involved with and give some guidance and mentoring to. So I love doing that. Um, you know, being in Bethlehem, there is no better community that supports small business, that wants to give back, um, and is loyal. Yeah. And so I'm so appreciative of that, and I just look forward to continuing to grow and expand those relationships in future years. All right, thank you, Anne-Marie, and thank all of you. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, share it with your friends, and uh, we'll have more Backyard Business. Thanks for watching.